Once and talk to the Lord in prayer. Power for the present hour. Power of very lost times, fearful times, difficult times, challenging times. That the Lord will help you to understand why you are here, why you came, and the purpose of your coming. The Lord definitely will fulfill. We thank God for all our ministers, all our preachers, all those who have been praying for us, all those who have been ministering one way or the other, serving us, and then serving us so that we'll be able to have all that God has for us, all our ministries towards you. Our ministers join together with me, our preachers join together with me, our singers, ushers, security, brothers, sisters, those who are feeding us, everyone, and those who are making the message to come across to us, they're doing that to prepare us to receive the power for the present hour. The retreat is not just a convention, it's not celebration, it is preparation time. So receive the power to be able to stand in the challenging days ahead. And pray that tonight what we have, what we receive, what we get from the Lord will still go further to bring about greater power upon our lives to be who God wants us to be and to be more than conquerors in the challenging times ahead of us. Pray that God will help you to be wise at this time to receive all that the Lord has for you. Pray for people around you too that God will help you to be an encouragement to them. Be good positive influence on people around you that they too will receive as much as the Lord has for them as the Lord is blessing you that the Lord will be blessing them too Great opportunity to receive power for the present hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you once again for the good God you are, for the great Father you are. You know what's ahead? And you don't want us to be taken by surprise. That's the reason you brought us together in this retreat. So we can sing through and so we can praise through and so we can plunge, plunge ourselves into the river of your mercy and your favor. And so that your fire, your power, the anointing and also the breaking of every yoke will take place in every life. Lord, we pray at this time again, reveal yourself very clearly to every one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, we know we are not the first set of people you are revealing yourself to. 
you revealed yourself to people of old and a lot of them benefited from that revelation some of them did not benefit and these things are written for learning upon whom the ends of the world are come we're praying lord you make us wise and this time of your favor and mercy we pray, Lord, we receive everything you have for us in Jesus' name. Make us strong. Make us wise. Make us bold and courageous in the day of evil. That we will be able to stand and nothing will defeat us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, we know. You are going to give us all the power we need for this present hour. Do it for us, Lord. We receive by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We have come to consider a message from the Word of God that looks very peculiar. And the Lord wants to reveal to us what we need to know for the present hour and for the future ahead of us. We're talking about escape from the power and influence of Sodom. That word escape, it means there is danger, peril, difficulty, a time that will catch everybody unawares. And yet the Lord has prepared a way, a way of escape. That word escape we find in many parts of Scripture. Let me point a few of them to you. One, as the Lord Himself used that word escape we're looking at luke chapter 21 verse 36 watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man the Lord is saying, a time is coming, a time of peril, a time of danger, a time of judgment, a time of punishment for the world. And he's saying, we need to watch. And we need to pray so that we will be accounted worthy to escape what's coming upon the people of the world. And he's telling us in Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Again, we're looking at the word escape. It's going to take something from you. It's going to demand something from you. So that you will escape. And you'll not be caught in the trial, tribulation, and in the trouble coming upon the people of the world because it will come upon them unprepared come upon them unawares but the lord is saying we will escape we're going to escape in jesus name hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 how shall we escape if we neglect how shall we escape if we neglect is sending messages to us through his servants many of us through his prophets many of us and through his appointed anointed preachers many of us and then he's saying how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the force began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. First generation 
believers are always very vigilant and watchful. Those who just came to the gospel at the first time, at the beginning of the church, the early church, always watchful. But the people that come second generation, third generation, first generation, they are mostly careless. When you think about the church, the early church, the church of the Acts of the Apostles, you find that devotion to the world, and you find that devotion to all the instructions, the commandments of the Lord, taking heed. But after you come, second generation, and third generation, and the fourth generation, then religion takes over from righteousness. And then the people are no more careful, are no more watchful, are no more serious about preparation for the coming of the Lord. That's what you'll find here. The people at the time that Paul wrote to the Hebrews, this is not the first generation. You have now second generation, third generation. And he's saying, how shall we escape? So great, if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first, that is the first generation of Christians, they heard it, they knew it, they embraced it. At the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and then was confirmed unto us by them. This is another generation now. By them that heard him, God also bearing witness, both for signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. I'm sure you know that many of us who are here now are the retreat. You are not the first generation of believers in our church deep alive. You came much later. And the vigilance of the early days, maybe you don't have. The watchfulness of the early days, maybe you don't have. The passion of the early days, maybe you don't have. And the seriousness of taking heed to the word of God, maybe you don't have. That's why the Lord is saying, second generation believers, third generation believers, fourth generation believers, understand. We are nearer the end than at the beginning. And so he says, how will you escape if you neglect so great salvation? We're not going to neglect. I said we're not going to neglect. That has come, you understand, the Lord is preparing you. And preparing us all together for the coming of the Lord so that we will escape what is coming upon this world. We're talking about escaping from the power of Sodom. The influence of Sodom. And let's look at the reason we're saying that. We're now back in Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked. And sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Talking about Sodom, the power of the sinful world, the authority of the sinful world, the influence of the sinful world. The men of Sodom were wicked. Not only wicked, they were sinners in the sight of the Lord. And it says, exceedingly. And the Lord is telling us that. We're living in the world, and the world in which we live in is like Sodom, sinful, wicked. And you know there's a word that came out of that name of the city, Sodom, Sodomites. Sodomites, those are men with men, messing up together, 